Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see anybody there. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm sorry if you didn't see this. I just have my cup of cocoa here and my goodbye girl cup. I'm just excited because tonight we're going to be going back to 1993 to revisit the Goodbye Girl musical, which is one of my favorites. And we have the cast and crew here this evening. But before we jump into it with them, I thought we'd show a little bit of what the Goodbye Girl was for those of you who did not get to see it. So here we go. Oh gosh, I am so excited. This has been three months in the making, you guys. So let's welcome the first part of our conversation. We're going to have a couple of the ensemble members. So we'll first bring in Linda. Hi there, Linda. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm so great. glad you're joining us. <laughs> and Larry, I saw you were dancing to that I, entire- I was. <laughs> you were definitely dancing. I was like, that's Larry, I know it's him. <laughs> I, had, I had my moment. Hi, Tally. <laughs> Hi. And of course, Suzanne. Hello. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> and Denise. Hi. Hi, Denise. Good Hi. Lord. Hi. <laughs> it's just fun. What was the last time you guys all saw t each other together? Was it 1993 or? Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, We've never had a reunion or anything. Re that's surprising. I was wondering if you guys ever had anything. Um, I know a lot of people know about the show, but it didn't have, I, I guess you'd say the best reputation of lasting long on Broadway, but a lot of people seem like when I've been posting about this interview, a lot of people are like, well, I saw it and I really liked it. And I was like, oh, this is good to hear because I do too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, I mean, you know, it, it, it wasn't like I, I've been to shows that lasted longer. We do have reunions and, uh, but uh, I'm not sure why we have never had a reunion. Does anybody know why we haven't had a reunion? I think we all went on to huge jobs right after, Susanna. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> is that <laughs> what it is? <laughs> there was some lingering stuff, though. Um, once uh, the Goodbye Girl closed, about a good half of us went on to the um, the State Farm Industrial that Wayne Salento did oh right after. Oh, my God. Like, just yes. oh, look at that. Everyone's there. Like, we went from the unemployment line right to that job. That was fun. Um, and then uh, the if if... You were one of the few who joined us on, on the Goodbye Girl Broadway Bowling League. We, you know, we kept, we kept that up for years after. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. I didn't hear about that. I didn't know I didn't that. I think that I bowl. Did I bowl in the league for a little while? I mean, I know I did with other shows, but I'm not sure if I did with. Yes, I did because I remember Patty Sassente also was on the league, and and uh, but I didn't bowl with it once we closed. So it's like done. <laughs> Well, right. technically, tonight marks 29 years since you officially opened on Broadway on March 4th, 1993. Unbelievable. So, we shouldn't be counting years, but here we are. So if 30th is coming up, I, I do hope that would be really cool if you guys got to do an in-person reunion. But I'm just glad you're here tonight it's because fun. it's lovely to see all of you um, after seeing all. Again, I never got to see the show, unfortunately. But um, with the love of the Internet and being able to listen to the show is always another thing, too, because I think... A lot of us who who maybe there weren't bootlegs back then, we just got to know the shows through the original album. So that was how it was great. for me. <laughs> so I was, was just re-listening. It was fabulous. What a great album. Mm -hmm. I, I was just so impressed with the music and the lyrics. I was like, David Zippel, it's awesome. It's so good. <laughs> Beautiful, like the lush orchestrations. But That's I was wondering it. for you guys, like what was one of those albums on Broadway? Because you all became Broadway stars being able to dance on stage in Broadway. But what was the Broadway album you listened to over and over again when you were a kid or teenager? <laughs> I listened to Grease. Grease was what made me want to be on Broadway. Um, I loved what, it. I loved it. I'm old. 
So uh, West Side, when my cousin had uh, uh, the album of West Side when I was a little little girl, and I just fell in love with it. And uh, and then when I right before I moved to New York, I guess a chorus line that was mm. you know that had just come out, and that really spoke to any dancer from my generation. So. Uh, so listen to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tally. Go ahead. I, I listened to Cats a lot because it just it was intriguing to me that it was really a show pretty much all about dancers. And I, I, I think I had it choreographed all in my head. And then when I saw it, I was like, this isn't as interesting as I had in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also a chorus line in West Side Story for me. Mm -hmm. Sure. City of Angels and uh, Sunday in the Park with George oh. really were my two go-tos. Oddly enough, very little, oh, puppy, very <laughs> little dance and, and or real, you know, two shows not known for movement necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's true. So I, don't, I don't know what that's about. And, so and how did, dance. <laughs> did you guys just jump into doing auditions or did you do community theater that kind of led up to doing, you know, all types of aspect of theater before getting to Broadway? Well, I um, I I came into it kind of late. I I didn't even like my high school didn't do musicals. My college didn't do musicals. And once I finished school, I, I went back. To, I'm from Richmond, and I went back and and auditioned for some dinner theater there. And uh, like non equity, Chew and View. I mean, you know, ten dollars a show, and here's a quarter. You were so good in the show when we were busting the tables. And wow. um, I did that for a year and a half, and then. Uh, I moved to New York and seven months after I moved to New York, I got my first Broadway show. So it, once I got there, it, w it went pretty fast for me. And that was the best little whorehouse in Texas. So Awesome. That's so good. <laughs> I crashed my first Broadway audition. I uh, dropped out of college after three years and I crashed an audition and I got it. And that was what happened. You, your parents must have been so excited when you dropped out of school after three my years. My mother, <laughs> who I think is watching right now, she <laughs> cut me off of the credit cards. She was like, that's it. I was like, okay, you know, a dancer's <laughs> life is young. I got to do it now. And uh, it worked out. I love that. I, um, I was actually in grad school and uh, I was in New York on a class trip. And I accidentally got um, invited to the final callback of a workshop at Lincoln Center. <laughs> um, and I didn't know it was the final callback until I walked in. And there were all of these guys who looked sort of like me all standing there with just a lot of knowledge. And I didn't have any. Um, and I ended up <laughs> booking me. that. And then I, yeah, that was my first. What? You you booked a, something you accidentally had a went to a callback for. How does that happen? What, I know. What I, show? I, I, it's, it was my favorite year, um, and okay. I uh, it it was. I'd like to just be cheeky about the word accidentally, but um, but Tommy Walsh uh, had taught. Um, I was in a class that Tommy, the amazing Tommy Walsh, was te was teaching, and he invited me to the to the callback, and uh, so that is how I ended up. Uh, in the club, <laughs> and then the Goodbye Girl was right after that. I wasn't even going to go to the Goodbye Girl audition. Actually, we were at the cast party for uh, the end of the My Favorite Year workshop, and uh, I can't remember who said, "Are you going to that you know thing tomorrow?" And I said, "Well, what's that? I don't know anything. I'm such an idiot." And um, and uh, the the guy said, "It was like an I'll oh okay I'll go if you go sort of situation." It was 3 a.m. We were in the village. I was living at 100 Millionth Street, so it was just not you know the men's call in the morning. Dragged got like two hours of sleep. Dragged my ass to it. Uh, my friend got cut right away, and I ended up several weeks later I'm booking the goodbye girl so that was my story there hmm. that's so fun tally i was um i i went a, sort of denise's path i went uh one year to college and then i booked a, a world tour and um so i got my an agva contract and then i moved to los angeles and i got an equity contract almost immediately and did um, dinner theaters, but I also did, um, I guess, community theaters and film and television. And then um, Jerome Robbins Broadway came and auditioned in Los Angeles, mm. which I didn't think I had a prayer of getting because, you know, that just didn't happen, getting people from Los Angeles for a Broadway yeah, show. That's so good. But apparently he was looking for someone um, my size 
that could um, play a child and play an adult as well and dance his material. So I was it. And he loved her too, P.S. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing. And and like from what I've been researching these past three months, like leading up to our interview, is trying to get a gauge of what what the consensus was before the sh this show, the G Goodbye Girl, came to be. Because you had two huge names with it, Martin Short and Bernadette Peters. And then you have Neil Simon and Marvin Hamlish and this wonderful creative team. So it sounds like all the stars are aligning. And it didn't really exactly go that way, obviously. So um, the audition process, what was exactly explained to you? Because this is not really a dancer show. It has two big dance numbers, and and which is a shame because I, I really think that that's where the show really steamrolls is when you guys are there. It's just so much fun. But the, the audition process initially, what had you been told about the show? Was it a dancer show or was it just, you know, we're going to, you know, fill you in it when we can? Hmm. They don't really tell you any of that shit. They you know, don't, you yeah. just go to you the, just I mean, I went in for Donna Douglas. I, I, so I was going in for a role, you know, I, we, it was the show of the season, the one, you know, the, the upcoming show of the season with all of those names attached to it. It was the one that you wanted to get. And, um, and they don't really give you the concept of the show. You just go in and, and try and, you know, I know that, um, that I went in for the initial call um, and, I don't, I guess I danced at some point, but I, I went, I went in for a principal role and then the callback, I know it was just five people that were called back because apparently I think it was Neil hated to sit for long and watch a lot of people audition. And so, um, uh, they, so they really narrowed it down, you know, and, um, and then you just do your, you know, your stick and, and, uh, do the scene and, and uh, I guess by then, Grazie had already seen enough of me to know I could dance. And plus, I had I'd just done Jerome Robbins Broadway. And so that kind of gives you a sense of it. And in the audition, too, the audition scene was where uh, Paula and Donna and uh, the Cynthia Rubia char character were, are on the floor uh, stretching out between, um, you know, during one of the, the dance numbers, before the big dance number. And so I went for it. I was down there doing my legs over my head and like this and, and all those old farts. They love that. So, so I booked it. But they didn't tell me what it was going to be, you know. And I had worked with Graziella a lot. And so uh, it was just a natural progression to work with her again. And, so. and she was the choreographer of the entire yes. show. Yeah, Graziella and Danielle, one of the most amazing women on Broadway in our time, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I assumed it was a dance show because of Graciela. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just, just the names attached, Marvin Hamlish, Neil Simon, how could you go wrong? Bernadette Peters, yeah. Martin Short. And Gene uh, Sachs. He did, you and know. Gene Sachs. Sachs. Yeah. The original director, which, yes. <laughs> which I'm hoping we're going to discuss what happened to Gene Sachs because I want to know if someone knows what I don't know. <laughs> I know that Gene and, and Graciela did not get along. Oh yes. no! It goes way deeper than that. I, I think I, so. It uh, has to do they, with Gene and Neil. and Neil had already yeah. had a falling out. G Neil had already told Gene after Gene had um, directed all of his shows yeah, that I'll he was not going to use him for laughter on the twenty third floor. So when they when we came into rehearsals, Gene already knew that for the next show, Neil was basically firing him. Oh, I didn't know that. so they had bad blood. It was it was it was um, uh, contentious from the get go. And yeah. then uh, I think that they just by the time we were halfway through Chicago and, and the show really you know wasn't working the way that they had hoped that mm -hmm. it would, that somebody needed to go. And since he was already going, it was like, see ya, you know, mm. I mean, that's my take on it. And and they they had a, there was a fight. Yeah. There were a bunch of fights, so <laughs> pick one. A physical you know? fight or just the verbal altercations? Yes, somebody got punched. Am I the only person that remembers? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh. I don't know. All right, all right. Okay, you know what? I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I don't remember the details. I was hoping one of you did. I didn't know about that. Who can we call? Uh, I'm, I'm going to call. Marty, I don't know. Marty, get Marty on the phone. Uh, Cynthia would know. Yeah, anyway. Cynthia would yeah. know. <laughs> well, I, I think we were privy to certain things. Um, Again, I was just too young and stupid to even listen in on it. I wish I really 
had had but uh, i think in chicago didn't we have there was like a production office that was separate near the lobby or something and it was separated by like a curtain instead of a door and you could hear stuff uh, there there is a rumor um mm. that i i don't know if this is real or not uh but apparently and please correct me as i'm telling the story uh that when gene left when gene departed uh they offered the it to to graciela to take over no no what i heard was that okay. what i thought was that Gracie was really pissed off because they did not offer it to her oh okay. that's what that was where i thought that went and then they get brought michael kidd in and, and are we going to talk about that oh uh, yeah well martin called him the hitler of comedy i mean i'll never <laughs> <Yeah>. forget <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that rumor. Yeah. I have a story about Michael Kidd. The one of the only stories that I have about this show is Michael Kidd. Do you remember on opening night? Does anyone remember Michael Kidd on opening night? Guys, we're all together backstage. If this show does great, it's because of me. And if it doesn't do well, it's because of you. I don't what remember we that. Remember? I don't that remember that at me? all. That I just remember like that. One of the craziest things I ever heard. I yeah. don't remember that. Nobody I just, remembers that. I just remember the day that we that uh, one of the first days when they when he came into the show, and he and Marty and Bernadette worked on scenes for hours in, and we were stuck in the hall, and and then they finally brought us in to watch what they'd been doing. <laughs> and I'll never forget this as long as I live. And this was already, you know, Martin is like stand up. So he likes an audience always because it lets him know what's working and what's not. So he, we finally come in, we sit down and we start to watch the scene. And Marty did something funny and we all started laughing. And I remember Michael Kidd going, Shut! and wouldn't let us laugh in front of a comic trying to, you know, it was like, Oh boy, we're in trouble. And that's that when we came out of the uh, rehearsal room after that on a break, that's what Martin was back there going, well, he's the Hitler of comedy, isn't he? You know, well, <laughs> so that I remember vividly. Oh I'm, I'm feeling grateful for the things I didn't know about. Like, you were, you were so young though. You were like early twenties, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were, you were a baby. So, and, and new young and new. So I was yeah, young. well, and you know, knew nothing. I mean, not that anybody else was that much older. I mean, I was. Yeah, I was older. No, but... we were just. Well, but I yeah. walked into a cast of stars in the ensemble and everywhere else, and we had three amazing young people in the show, plus um, the understudies, and they had careers that were way, way more. Their resumes were out the door, and mine was like one thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I oh yeah, one of them was a ears. star on a soap opera. What? Which one was? Aaron. It? Aaron. 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 Yeah, yeah, Aaron was a soap, soap okay. opera star. So you know. Amazing. Yeah. Well, they filmed a behind the scenes a TV TV special, basically, and it's on on YouTube for everybody to see. But I did want to play a couple of clips. This one is from the beat behind rehearsal. So you might see some familiar. And exactly as I thought, behind, look at her with the lungs of Madonna and the thought, behind. Oh, wow. This is on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yes. fun. <laughs> it was fun. So good, you guys. Oh, my God. Like, that's where I feel like the show hits this stride. And I'm like, why didn't we continue with that? I think everybody <laughs> asked the same question because it's so mm -hmm. funny. You guys are amazing on that stage. Thank you. Thank you. It's also a good reminder. Uh, how What a great dancer, Bernadette. She brought such great dance. You know, she, she that leg is flying. Always. Mm -hmm. right? Amazing. Yes. And, and, and that's and, a hard part to sing, too. Like, it, oh, when yeah. you listen to the album, you're like, oh, this is belt all the way through. Yeah. Well, she's amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think it was, although most of the numbers were, were pretty good. I mean, there were a few that never made it to opening, which was really good. Remember that, like, strong woman number that we did that? For about three days, that was so bad. It was so bad. Um, but I think that the biggest problems with the show were with with the book. Um, and you know, it really, I don't think it, in my personal opinion, I don't think it should have ever been brought back as a musical in the 90s. It was, you know, it was a it was a play and, and a movie of its time in the 60s and and now these guys all got back together. Now, by now they're like pushing 80 and they're gonna be writing a show about a woman's point of view mm -hmm. <laughs> about in a very different period too. Things have changed mm -hmm. a lot in those 30 years. So I think that it always had, it was always problematic, you know, mm. that they were writing about something they really didn't know. That's my sense. I don't know, what do y'all think? I don't know. I don't remember the book well enough to critique it at this moment but the lyrics which i just listened to and i've already said i thought were spectacular i think the yeah. songs are spectacular yeah. i don't know i i guess yeah i don't know i had a great time i, I always too. remember i always remember larry you were always working upstairs doing work in the second act <laughs> yeah i remember think i, that? I was you working were going to school yeah, I was working on a big thing of pasta usually is what I was doing. <laughs> no, you were eating doing ziti. Work. <laughs> there was stuff. I had some projects happening and some other things. Anyway, and, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's you're right though, Suzanne. I mean, that perspective, why would they have that perspective? It's, you know, nowadays if you look back, it's just absurd, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it is it's, Somebody in the and, audience says, hi, I just got here, but I saw it. Uh, this is, uh, she's actually, I just met her last week. I was at a cabaret and she said she actually saw it as a kid. She saw you guys do the show on Broadway. So, hey there. Hi. <laughs> hi. Wow. I was intrigued with working with um, Marty and Bernadette, just watching them and learning. I mean, I've never been with a, a comedy artist of that. I mean, Jason's a comedy artist, but different, you know, for sure than, than Martin Short. I mean, he was improvising all over the place and just um, his his um, impersonations and things like that. And I just, that, that kinetic energy all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I was just, um, I think my focus was was more on that. Yeah. And I really, I, I really did think that the music was good. I thought that, yeah. the, um, that the dance was good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I realized that, that the show wasn't being well received, but I just was, mm -hmm. I was, I never meant to, yeah. I, I never meant to end up on Broadway. I was very glad that I did. But, um, <laughs> I was somebody that was always in like, oh my gosh, that's Bernadette Peters and, and Marty Short and, you know. Uh, do you remember when we were in Chicago and um, it, we were in tech and uh, Martin and, and Bernadette were working again in, in the apartment, you know, and, uh, most everybody was not in the house. I love watching tech. So I was in the house watching tech and this person comes walking down the aisle and jumps up on the stage and it was Robin Williams. And <laughs> do you remember that? And I remember this vividly and I was like, Oh my God. And then they, they were so, it was so neat because they were like two 10 year old boys and Marty's showing him around. He's like, look, look, the sink works. Look, the sink works, Robin. And so it took them all around. And then they started doing an improv together, like a five minute improv on the stage. And by then everybody was had heard he was in that and started creeping up from the dress, you know, but they did this like just, and I realized, oh, that's how they play. They mm -hmm. improv brilliantly. And that's fun for them. You know, that's mm -hmm. just how they pass 10 minutes. So. 
that was mm. that was a neat moment. Mm. Wow. Well, a lot of there was a lot of stars that came to the show. Spielberg, from what I heard, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Just a lot of people coming in now. Were a lot of them coming in during the um, rehearsal period, or was it mo more so after the show opened that you got to meet all these people? I don't think they've been in rehearsal. No, they no, weren't. Nobody the was show. in rehearsals but us. Yeah, it was closed rehearsal pretty much, wasn't it? I don't remember them. Yeah, no, the show. Yeah, yeah. It once we like opened. Robbins. <laughs> We, uh, it wasn't like Jerome like, Robbins Broadway where had, the Who's of American Musical Theater was in there every week for a run through, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, half New York was in the show, so I don't know who was left to come see. You know, <laughs> there, my All God. the people that had done it 40 years before. So. Right. <laughs> so you have the, the Chicago tryout and there's a lot going on during that portion. Obviously, when a show is about to go to Broadway, there are so many changes that happen before it. Um, and so... I couldn't really keep tally of all these changes. Obviously there were a couple songs that were removed, but were there any notable changes that you think would have been great not to have changed? Or was there anything in your the mind? Director. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was one number, uh, there was, what was the number? It was, um, I really feel like I, for me, I just, I, I use this as, I know I'm gonna be directing at some point. I, I wanna learn everything about, what can I learn? What can I learn? Uh, and, uh, um, I one of the big takeaways for me was the footsteps, the footsteps number. What is it? Don't follow in my footsteps, right? Oh, yeah. So uh -huh. Bernadette is giving advice to her daughter, don't do what I've done and you'll have a success more. You know, the the idea of the song is fantastic. I think the song was great. Um, and, and with Graciela's treatment, I seem to remember it had like a vaudeville feel to it, where it, we were in the maybe I think we were in the apartment and then it took off into this magical sort of like theater land where there was a maybe a fringe curtain or something. It was very much a presentational theater hat and cane thing. And I thought that was oh. like so great. And then when we got the, when the direct, the, <laughs> when that happened with old director, new director, um, <clears throat> that number became something else. Uh, I, as I remember, I was not in the, uh, in it, but I think, didn't it go to, all of a sudden it was a, that all that theater magic went away and it was grounded in a real environment now, like a park mm -hmm. or something. And I it think, was real. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? And I just thought, Oh, that mm. seems like a bummer because it sort of took the magic of the thing away. And, and mm. it's almost like it said, now it's a movie musical, which makes sense. Michael Kidd, you know I mean? That was like his mm. big thing. Um, mm. So I thought that was a bummer. And mm -hmm. you know, if I, I, I ever, that... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If I ever do the show, which I kind of want to, um, that that rain curtain's coming back. That, 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 <laughs> I like that, that idea. Coming, yeah, they're coming back. What there was one number. It it didn't get cut, but it got changed drastically from Chicago to New York, and that was a bad food groups number. Um, oh yeah, right. Because when we were in Chicago, that number was like it was a like a like a, almost a sexual predator number. And we sang it really like say so long. And we had these costumes that were to die for. And, uh, they were like, I was like a pineapple. I was a ham and I had a little, and it was just form fitting and gushing out, the tits were gushing out. I had little pineapples with, you know, on there. And, and, and Bernadette was like, um, she was like a, a cake or, you know, what was Bernadette? She was onion rings, but they were just, strategically placed and that you know it was really high up and down low and beautiful shoes and then we got to new york and they can't call us and when they said well we're thinking we're, re we're rethinking this number and we're like okay so the next thing we know i'm a cheeseburger with a costume that's like this big and we're going say so long to the. i mean it was like total uh bernadette was um french fries and yeah, uh, Cynthia yeah. was a cake a piece of cake yeah. and these costumes were like four feet across and yeah, uh, yeah there yeah, it is. There you go. But that started out as this gorgeous, I, if you could have seen these, they were the one of the, some of the sexiest costumes I've ever worn and we love them. The only thing that we got to keep were the shoes. Mm. So, th so that was a big change. Um, I, that, I don't think it really helped the number. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I say that was some that sexy picture. food, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those legs. <laughs> I think oh. I have the picture of the shoes because don't you have a story with the shoes? With the sh Ooh. oh yeah, there they are. They were like um, Charles Jordan or something. They were really comfortable and they looked so great with the sexy costume. But uh, they do, yeah, but not with. I mean, with the cheeseburger, you know, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and we would be standing backstage to go on, and we'd go. 
I've been in, you know, this was, that was my fourth Broadway show. By the point I'm like, I, I'm a cheeseburger, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, and then there, then the number I was talking about before that strong woman number, that was awful. Where, that, where, where all, was that place? Remember that? Where was and that we, place? Like, Does that give first act or second act? I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember mm -hmm. that. Like, I can even remember the beginning stuff because it was it was Bernadette and Carol and I and, and and we would start out and there was like this kind of movement in it as we were going down. And then everybody else came in and uh, and none of us like it, liked it really. I mean, even when they played it for us, we were kind of like, huh, you know, <laughs> you have to be diplomatic about these things. But and we could tell Bernadette didn't like it. And I, I learned an amazing lesson from Bernadette that day because all day we worked on it for hours and she did it exact exactly the same way each time she never said i hate this number she you know she was being a team player but she never did it good she did it okay mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they give her a notice she go oh okay and she'd be so nice about it then she'd go back and do it exactly the same way again and mm -hmm. the next day the number was cut so you know mm -hmm. it didn't last long we didn't make it out of Claudia says that she bought those shoes. Claudia's going to be in the second half of our, our chat in the Mark. next 30 minutes. But yeah. <laughs> I still have mine. I can't get in them now, though. Rick's but. also in the chat. He says they rewrote the whole show for London, which is true. That's right. Hey, Rick. Yeah, Hi, I think, Rick. Hi, Rick. I think David's, didn't David take it and, and uh, uh, kind of reboot the whole thing? Yeah, some of the uh, the songs for Paula were taken out, and evidently it was not well received. I've oh, heard the, the 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 score, and it's 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 very different, but it has some of the songs from the Broadway show. But I don't think it's the one that David, the lyricist, changed. He that was a, I think that was like in I think Debbie actually Shapiro uh, grabbed it. Uh, okay, ended yeah. up doing that in the in the hmm. states somewhere, and they reconfigured it a lot. Yes, that was the first go round after after the uh, the Broadway company. I, I was in one of the, I, I, I worked with Debbie on the show. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, uh, let's see, I think it was Theater League out of LA. <clears throat> and um, Probably. And um, the big story there was, I was in the $7 million production of The Goodbye Girl, then I was in the $700 production. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie was amazing, oh my God. Yeah, it should be great in that role. And yeah. Gary Sandy was Martin Short. Martin Short. Yeah, mm. different, totally different tone, different feel. It was, in, uh, it was kind of crazy and great to hear those songs sung, living with the Bernadette version and then the Debbie version, and they're such different voices, both amazing, but so mm -hmm. different. It was very it different. Was a trip. It was a trip. Mm -hmm. So th there's um there's a a Broadway tradition. Um, originally it was called the Gypsy Rose, but robe, but now it's called the Legacy Robe. And yes. I found a clip from the documentary of of one of the castmates receiving the Gypsy ro Robe, and it's kind of explained in the background. So I thought we'd play this really quickly just to to show what that experience is like. Indeed, not the oldest gypsy, the oldest dancer, but you have to have done more shows than anybody else. And when you've done that, then you are eligible for the robe. And you have to run around the stage three times. And everybody that has received it in every show, you have to add something of your show to the robe. When I got it in 1010, we added the white bloomers that we wore on our can can dress. When Crazy For You got it, they added all uh, rhinestones because, they're, you know, the whole show is sort of filled with rhinestones. And it's a great honor to receive it. It means that you fit in more Broadway shows than anybody else. <laughs> Aw, that's nice. Dennis. Oh, we can't hear you, Terry. I am sorry, my, my mic went on. But I was just going to say, do you guys know what you guys added to the robe? Because I couldn't find any information about where that robe is now. Usually the wardrobe does that. So, you know, it's kind know. of their 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 gift to, Domain. to yeah, the robe, know. you know. So I have mm -hmm. no idea. Mm -hmm. Were any mm -hmm. of you able to wear uh, the robe at one point in time during one of the shows? No. Nope. No. 
I'm, I, yeah, it has to be, it's the ensemble. person that's done the most pink contracts and most ensemble contracts. And mm -hmm. I've done, I haven't done that many ensemble contracts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, so mm -hmm. it wasn't. Uh, and it's Daniels, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yep. That's who it was who got the robe. I tried reaching out to him, but I, I didn't hear back. But I just thought that it was so cool. Apparently, they have a lot of the robes at the Smithsonian now. So oh, nice. that's cool. Them, mm -hmm. That is cool. I was trying to email the Smithsonian. I'm like, do you have this robe? And they're like, well, right now we're closed due to COVID. Like we can't go in and physically look for it, but maybe mm. we do. So I, I, they, they had one robe online, but it was like just right before goodbye girls, like just oh. ended at 92. So they said that they'll, they'll look at another time, but I was like, Oh, it's just so interesting to see that. And to see that the tradition still carries on. So that's very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who, who got the robe for Jerome Robbins Broadway? I mean, since we have, was it Ramon? It was Ramon. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, that it. was really cool. Yeah, because I didn't know anything about it. And um, yeah, the whole going around three times and, and you have to go up to every floor, every dressing room. Yes, too. yes. So you're opening night, you're running around like a crazy person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that would be so right before the show, know. right? Hmm? It, it's always right before the show, right? It's not at the yeah. very end. No, it's right before. It's right before. It's on opening night. It's like you know, you gather before half. It's be, it's before half hour, isn't it? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, because otherwise they wouldn't have time to do everything they have to do. So it's really special. It's a really special thing. Yeah, I love that you called the Smithsonian. <laughs> well, I was like, I'm gonna see if I could do some Nancy Drew work here. <laughs> Where's that robe? Because <laughs> it's hard to find. It was hard to find a lot of material and information about the show. And um, we do have somebody in the audience. I'll call him the Phantom of the Goodbye Girl because he shot the footage that you saw of the um, the basically the bootleg of uh, Ooh, the good. beat behind. And oh. he was the person that I reached out to, and he had the only video footage because at the time it's 1993 of you guys performing and now you know like he couldn't couldn't film all of the entire show but i was like so grateful what he sent me i was yeah. like this That's is great. so cool <laughs> thank, you who, thank you to who yeah thank you thanks to the phantom wherever <laughs> you may be <laughs> it was larry, larry it's, were it's you gene, in the, the spirit of gene Sachs oh. shooting the video <laughs> larry know. were you in the were you in the king richard scene well, yes, oh. I was. Uh, oh, no, 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 I wasn't. I was in the audience of the, no, that. That was you and I, right? Were Suzanne we and I were scene partners. Um, <laughs> and Suzanne at one point said, why am I at the show with my nephew? <laughs> 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 yes, that scene actually was, um, not to divert, but uh, a, a, a learning story. Um, so we're in, uh, we're in, uh, we're out of town. We're in Chicago. And uh, every day, before like a rehearsal or whatever, because you know the show is developing. We meet as a cast, and we are we are we get the list of the things that are cut from the show forever, like at the beginning of the thing. And so every day I'm going, okay, this is the day where my moment where I get to walk out onto a Broadway stage and say some words is going to get cut. And every day the scene survives, but other stuff is getting cut. And I'm watching again, being the new idiot. I'm watching these like people who've had million Broadway shows and Tony nominations and stuff in the ensemble getting stuff cut. And I know it's not because of them; they're building the show, but still. Um, and by the end of this several weeks, you know, long process, I sit down on the last day and I say, okay, if the scene makes it in after today it's the show is frozen and i'm gonna get to go i'm gonna get to do this i'm going to walk out with suzanne fletcher and say some stuff and lo and behold the scene does not get cut so i say oh my god suzanne the scene gets to stay how great and suzanne fletcher turns to me and says the scene was never going to get cut bernadette is making a costume change <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I just learned something big about structuring a show. This is great. Put that right? in the pocket. And I, there's a couple other things about that scene too, because it was it, it was like in the, it was supposed to be the intermission of Richard the Third, you know, the bad Richard the Third that that Marty's doing, and and uh, and then uh, we're out there talking about how horrible it is, and and uh, Larry says, "Come on back, you know, come on." We, the second act is starting, and I say, "No, I'm not going." And then I say, "No, no," and finally he's like, "No." and he's dragging me you know back in when we were in chicago there was one night that there's never a good when you're out and we were in front of the curtain it, it, we were in front of the curtain they were changing stuff behind us and all of a sudden we're having we're doing the scene and all of a sudden you hear this 
you know, and the entire set behind us is like a train ramming into a station or something. It's like, yeah, that's not good. And uh, and they like you see like the part of the curtain kind of going like this and going back. And so now it there been and it had it looked like a train wreck. This the the set was half on and half off, and the other one was half off and half on. And now, Larry, do you remember this? And you went to pull me into the wings. And I'm and I'm screaming no with my head back like this, and I spammed into a hard cider. I just like bing, shik, kung, and I was I mean I was down on the ground, and and like my, my eyes were sort of passed. You know, I could hear everybody, but I couldn't open my eyes. And I saw those little birds ahead of in front of my face. You know, my in my black yeah. out, and I'll never forget when I came to because they put Martin in this gold lame with the big hump and this crazy like curly wig. And then, you know, they enhanced Bernadette's hair with extra hair so that her hair is all big. And when I came to, they were both leaning over me with all of this hair, <laughs> going, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? And they had to, they had to stop. They had to shut because I was half on and half off the stage. They had to stop the show for a little while and get that one straightened out. But that's the main thing I remember about that scene. That was crazy, and there was a power outage at some at some point, right? Didn't like all the lights go off, and there was yeah. some. Am I making that up? Was that no? I, I'll, I, almost every show has a power outage at one point, <laughs> <laughs> and especially if we were in Chicago. That was an old theater, you know. Yeah. So, I think I have a clip from uh, rehearsals for that specific scene. I don't have. I love the, that scene. Falling down and getting hurt, but let's let's see if this will play. <laughs> I'm forbidden Broadway to pay for the apartment as well. Oh hi. <laughs> Um, it is unbelievable the expense of this city. Versatile as he is, this is Martin's first Broadway show. And even the dancers have found he has a few things to learn. <laughs> I disagree. You're going to do me right now, and I'm going to watch. Okay. Right? <laughs> wow it's great he was fun to walk so walk fun on. so good God, martin and every saturday night i mean like you know when we would go anywhere with the two of them between Bernadette's stardom and Marty's stardom, the entire world was pretty much covered. And like the people would just be gawking and gawking and gawking. So Martin, every, at the end of each week, instead of us going out, like in, we'd all, he'd have a party every every Saturday night or Sunday. I can't, I think it was Saturday night. Were we off on Sundays? I don't remember. Um, but he'd have a party in his dressing room and we'd all go there and he'd pay off the doorman and, and we'd like have a party in there till about 2, 2.30 in the morning. and and Bernadette and, you know, just the whole gang, just so that they could have some privacy. Hi, put, hi, kitty. <laughs> She's like, let me be a part of it. Let me be the <laughs> <a> star. <laughs> well, what, what are some of your favorite memories of just being backstage together as an ensemble? Because I think a lot of people who have never done a show before, I love community theater and I still get to do it, but there's right. like this sense of, there are, are there's so much going on behind the scenes. Sometimes you're helping somebody like getting unzipped from their costume and jumping into something else. Or Not in a union dodging. show, honey. You don't <laughs> unzip anybody in a union show. Well, yeah, no, I, I know that. But I'm saying like, you know, in instances where sometimes, you know, like if the show must go on, if there's like an issue or there's a crisis, you know, sometimes you're helping out or something like that. But can you talk about any of those, you know, that come that working together, that coming together as a team? Here's one, kind of. Uh, it was our closing. This is more like the greater theater community, besides just like sort of beyond our company. Um, closing performance, and uh, Suzanne and I are doing our big scene, <laughs> and I'm dragging Suzanne off the stage, and we go around. And the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to sit on a set of of like bleachers, bleachers. that are, are going to then track out onto the stage, which you know happened every time. 
points of closing, we go around and there are all these other people who are sitting there from the oh, good I forgot about from, that. Yeah, from the guys and dolls company. So it was, I'm not sure if Nathan <gasps> was there, but um, who else was there? Oh my God, Denise, who was there? Uh, it, it, it was all these guys and dolls company members That's who fun. had come out to sit on that thing. Um, Oh, who is Nathan Lane's like really good friend who he did a bunch of shows with, who is also- a uh, uh, Ernie Savalica. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Ernie. Just, yeah. And, and all of these people. And the um, the piece of scenery, you know, it's Broadway, so everything's, you know, just a million dollars. And and it would just track out on its own, except at that performance, it kind of went mm. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of people had to get up and let her help it out. Because it was like, so heavy for my, the extra people. I remember that one. I've forgotten nice, like, about that. that. That's mm -hmm. funny. That's a good one, yeah. I mean, a lot of the cast, a lot of the um, uh, the, the ensemble uh, had just worked together on, on Jerome Robbins Broadway. Mm -hmm. So it was really like just coming back from a, a, you know, summer vacation or something, you know. So um, and, and, and Martin and Bernadette were both just so lovely to work with that our, our camaraderie uh, was really tight. You know, I think that was really the thing that made that show the best, at least for me, was because there were, really Chicago was hard. I mean, you know, there was Chicago was fun, but it was also stressful, you know, and so that and that tends to bond a cast, too, if it doesn't tear them apart. So I thought we were a happy cast. For sure. Yeah, I think I think I, we were. I don't have sure. a, like a one story, but I think we were a super happy bunch. And uh, I think we had a really good time. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact the fact that the show, you know, closed so quickly, I, I think I was surprised actually because it was all seemed so. I mean, obviously you sort of can feel the audience, but I don't know. I was like having such a good time. I wasn't really thinking about that. Yeah, six months. Yeah. It ran well, out. I think. I mean, it didn't like close in a night or anything. It, it, it no. ran. I think from stem to stern, oh, yeah. we were almost a year, like between the three yeah. months in Chicago. Oh, but including Chicago. Right. Including, I, I, cause it ended up being almost exactly a year that we, you know, were involved. But uh, yeah, I kind of was hoping it was going to keep going, but yeah. that's when, you know, they realized that the stars were selling the show. The show wasn't selling itself. Mm. Yeah. Well, here's and I, some I, I Here's said, some photos you guys had shared as well, too. I think this was from yeah, Bernadette's last uh, party. This was Bernadette's party on her roof. I mean, on her at her apartment. That was such a fun party. Ah. Oh. There's Martin. Here's These are some great shots. There's Carol. Nice. These are great. Oh yeah, gosh. I, I uh, took all these. At, oh. oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And this is out on her rooftop? Well, no, it's out on her terrace. She has yeah, a, a beautiful apartment with a terrace. Fabulous. There she is. And yeah. Joe. Joe LaCaro. Yeah. Love him. Me too. This Aww, is a great shot. Look, has great. anybody talked to Ruth? What is happening with no. Ruth? I don't know. Steve Beers. Yes. Oh, Marianne. Patty. Mar oh, Marianne sends her love. Marianne Aww. wanted to come, but she works on Friday. She works all the time. Aww. Yeah. That, on that the was all the kids. Oh, oh. cute! <laughs> yeah, you guys look like you were having a great time, and the food looks good too. <laughs> it was well. It was a really nice party. Oh, Harry! Because this was yeah. this was Bernadette was going to be heading out, so I, I assume that that's kind of why they were going to close the show. They didn't have another big name to come in. I don't. Yeah, I. I. You know, you have to talk to the producers about that. But <laughs> hello, that's my ex right there on the left. Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There's Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Suzanne, these are your photos? Yes, from that party. Great. Great. Yeah. You I didn't, didn't have cell phones then. How did you keep these? Great. Uh, th they were real, fo they were real, real photos. Pictures. And really? I just took, I took pictures of them last week with my cell phone. So back when we still had cameras. Mitchell Bloom. I had a meeting with Bernadette's replacement. Who? <laughs> Why well, should you be sending them in? There was, did anyone just see Mitchell Bloom? Just oh, wow. I had a meeting. Yes. Oh, oh, he's he's typing. He's typing. He's in the okay. green room right now. Okay. Bernadette's cool. replacement. 
But oh, Cheryl right. Lee Ralph. Right, oh, right, oh, right. Oh, oh, that would have been interesting. Mitchell, hold that story. We'll, I'll, I'll bring wow. you in. I promise. I promise. Because we're, we're just about to wrap up. I did want to play another clip, which um, uh, I believe this is also from the Phantom of the Goodbye Girls um, footage <laughs> of the Jump for Joy segment of the oh, show. So God. here you go. Yeah, girl, I hated that. I hated this I number. I hated it. I hated oh, it. I hated this oh, number. I hated it. I loved it. Of course, because you were young enough to know how to hip hop. Uh, this, I don't think this was hip hop. <laughs> it was supposed to be. A lot of hop. Yeah, hop. Ah, I remember that. <laughs> quads, quads, shins, shins, shins. Oh, good God. I didn't remember oh, all that. That's I amazing. hated that. Uh, <laughs> I really couldn't find any footage of that anywhere. So thank God for the Phantom of the Goodbye Girl. That was great. Yeah, I haven't seen that in yeah. long. Mitch, I, I really hated it too. Cancer in, in Los Angeles. That was a little bit of my background. <laughs> but it was supposed to be hip hop. But she had all of these. All of these. First of all, Grazi was, you know, choreographing it. I don't know how much Grazi knew about hip hop at the time. And then all of us, we were like real Broadway veterans or young Broadway, you know, but we were not the hip hop gang, you know, Nancy Hess and myself. And I mean, you know, we just weren't the hip hop gang. And there we are. Dun. I remember how we came in on. Yeah, that wasn't hip hop. Well, Rick yeah. just said Larry on the trampoline. Yeah. Entrances. Oh, that's we had, right. We had in one entrances uh, on boom. <gasps> That's yeah, that right. Fun. Did you do some of those? Yeah, that's right. I forgot that's about scary. that. That's scary. That's well. That's why he liked it. Yeah, yeah, because he was two years old. I just had knee surgery right before we started rehearsals for this show. I right. thought I'm going to be okay. And the very first day, the very well, I'd had it like six months before, and I was pretty much recovered. But I still, if you've ever had like your knee scoped, it's like you still have that tightness. And I was like, I'm going to, I'll be okay, you know. And the very first thing we did was the. Uh, um, the about the in the at the ballet bar and uh, uh, but we were in the center and we would do that grand plie in fifth position in heels i'm like are you kidding me out of everything that we could start with i have to do a grand plie in fifth in heels so the hip hop number was not my favorite it was not uh, my favorite i i didn't know a lot but i did know that when i saw that tramp i thought uh, the trampoline, I thought, hazard pay, hazard pay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like $15. Extra... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was surprised that they that they put that. Well, obviously they wanted to showcase you guys again, but there's like no talking during that whole segment. Although the music is just gorgeous, it's beautiful, and so I was like, oh, this is just an interesting place to put it in. But okay, you know, it kind of builds up Bernadette being uh, the choreographer in the show, her character. So I, I enjoyed that. I thought that was fun. Did you guys have a, a favorite song from the show? Uh, yeah, oh, her, one of her ballads I loved. How no more. Yes. Oh, how can I win? How, how can I win? Oh, beautiful, beautiful ballad. How can I win when stage. I'm not on my side? Stunning. Right. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was a, the their their best work. Beautiful. Uh, you know, Marvin and and David, and Marvin was really interesting because while everybody else was kind of like tanking out of the creative group, Marvin, I. I was so, he was so amazingly gifted and he just had music that just spewed out of him and we'd be mm. at the, he'd be playing something and, and he, you know, something new and he'd see an expression on either Jean's face or whomever's face and he'd be like, oh, you don't like that? Well, well, how about this? I believe, bloop, 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 bloop. And then he'd play another whole way of doing it. Or, uh, um, and he just was always happy to keep giving you more mm -hmm. music, you know, mm -hmm. creating more music. He never seemed like, I never saw him like, you know, but this is going to stay because it means that mm -hmm. he just was always willing to write the next song. Mm -hmm. I really respected him a lot after I hadn't worked mm -hmm. with him before. And I just Me really, too. out of all of them, he was the one I gained the most respect for, I think. Oops. Yeah, I, I, 10 years ago, um, Martin had come to do a show here at the Man Center in Philly. And uh, who was conducting it was Marvin. So it, uh, now that was before I even knew the show. I don't recall them doing a song from the Goodbye Girl, but I just thought it was so cool to see them up on stage. I have like a video clip of them doing the Three Amigos song. And 
Marvin's having a blast just conducting that while Martin is, you know, performing it. So I thought I, I was just so honored to at least to get to see him, you know, perform his his music. It was a wonderful evening. So, you know, That's I just great. I loved that. And I, I love his music in this. And it was great because when I tweeted out about this, um, whoever runs his Twitter account was like, we'll be watching. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> oh boy so well, they're we, watching hi. hi we've said uh, we've said very good things about everybody i think except for maybe you know some of the creatives and you know well yeah well you guys were diplomatic it it I, I, and putting a show t together and bringing it to broadway it just sounds like a nuisance anyways so i'm sure it was it was really difficult but you guys did a fantastic job i do wish that they had, you know, more uh, uh, promo footage of it. I'm sure there is more mm. of it filmed somewhere, but I just really wanted to thank you guys for coming on the show this evening because I I love what you guys did. It was fantastic. I wish thank I could have just been there to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you. That's you. Thank fun. you for bringing us together. I know. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Great. Great and hopefully everybody. you guys have a, have a 30th at some point. <laughs> yeah, like, Tally, get on that. that. You're good at that yeah. stuff. No, yeah. <laughs> Barbara's good at that. <laughs> well, yeah, but she wasn't in the show, so. <laughs> Nancy Hess. Nancy Hess, oh, okay. Right there. And Tammy, you'll be there too. I, I promise, I'll be there. I'll bring uh, the cheesesteaks from Philly. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. All thank right. you. Have fun on act two with your second round. It's oh, great. Thank you. We're going to have a mm -hmm. dance segment in that one. <laughs> oh, we, well, you have one on because we all did this at the same time. So. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, let's see. You have Rick Chrome, a bunch of the designers and technical staff. I want to see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to get some good dirt yeah. from the designers, I would think. I'm staying around for that. <laughs> yeah, me Mitchell too. Mitchell has his story. I know he's waiting. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. It was Thank good to you. see you. Thank Thanks. you for doing this. Thank you so much. See you in a little bit. We're Bye. already bunching out. Um, so now I'm going to play a little clip while we're getting ready for the next group. Um, this is a tour of the backstage. So you'll get to see um, with the stage manager, I believe his name is Peter Lawrence, and he's going to show you the backstage. It's actually really, really cool to see the Broadway stage back in the 90s. So here we go. This sort of Irish road sign here tells them where to go. Then the actors sign in over here. We had just enough room on the sign sheet to get everybody in. And then we usually lay out coffee and, um, and pastry and things here. <laughs> and then we all say hello to Bernadette. Where? What pastry? <laughs> Sweet and low. <laughs> and right through here, this is the door into the stage. We keep this closed because it's noisy out here. This is the stage manager's desk over here. Since we can't see the stage, we have a number of different camera angles that we use. We have a master shot, which is the entire stage from the front. We have an overhead shot, which is sort of the June Taylor dancer's shot, you know, from overhead. And then this shot, which is now sort of looking empty, is uh, the conductor's shot. So we can watch Jack Everly conduct the show because we take an enormous number of our cues from his downbeats and from his cutoffs. So you saw Jack Everly's score down there in the pit. Okay. Okay, Denny. Thunder's gonna happen, everybody. See, that was the thunder we promised you. <laughs> it's part of the sound check we do before every show. The stoop, you can, t you can see, it's two stories tall. There's a 3,000 pound piece of scenery that we fly out in order to set up other pieces here on the deck. The boat, which is used in the second act, is flown here until the second act. Then we bring it in on the deck, fly the bed out, the boat goes in through here. When the boat comes off, we bring the bed back in and fly the boat back out. So the offstage choreography actually gets rather interesting. But we have a scene in the show that is done on the rooftop of Paula's building. And this is one half of that set. This is, you can see these are chimneys that you would find on the, on the rooftop of a brownstone. And the scene starts with Marty Short um, in evening wear, lighting a match and smoking a cigarette. And we couldn't get the match to light properly, so we glued some sandpaper here to the side of the chimneys. We have, by the way, on this show, and in fact, I think you'll find on most Broadway musicals, between the dressers and the crew backstage, we have more crew than we have actors. Brian Lynch, who's our production electrician on the show. Jack Culver's our front light man. This is Karen Kelly, who's Bernadette's dresser. This is Stephen Bishop, who's our hair supervisor. Penny Davis is our wardrobe supervisor. I've done at least 50 shows with Penny Davis <laughs> since 1904. <laughs> 
Leonard Soloway, who's our general manager on the show. Leonard is responsible for spending all the money on the show. And he's done a very good job on the show. <laughs> That is really, really cool to see. And uh, I think, who was it that said, Larry was talking about the monitors, how old they are. It's so interesting to see how everything has changed now uh, from back then. So I think we have almost everybody in the chat for our next group. So I'm gonna bring everybody slowly but surely on. So here we go, we got Mitchell, hi again. He's here, I you love your me? bow tie. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> and Claudia. Hi. Hi there, Thank you guys. Claudia. You guys worked hey, on the the costumes, which was which are great in this show. So hi, <laughs> hello. And we've got Rick. Hi, Rick. Hi. It's good to see. You. I see you've been chatting along with us. So thanks I'm, for chatting. I'm along. just so thrilled with to see all the the people and the fact that we're still alive. Just surprises me. <laughs> yes, it's a good thing. It's, it's such it's such joy. And hey, Lisa, how's hi. it going? Very well, thanks. How's everybody doing? Good to see you all. And Aaron, hi, Aaron. Hi. Hi. Look, look how they've grown up. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, it's so good to see everybody. And and I do have to say kudos to Lisa because Lisa's been helping me these past three months put this whole thing together. So thank you. And she got me a program. I have it right behind me. Wow. <laughs> Well, wow. you've been you've been nothing but uh, amazingly diligent at trying to coordinate everything and you know put this together. And I I actually really appreciate it because this was uh, a, an amazing time of my life. I'll never forget. Yeah, well, you and Aaron uh, really jumped in on this when you were when you both were kids. How old <laughs> were you when you joined in in the cast? Because you guys were younger than you know thirteen, right? Uh, when we first joined, yes. Uh, I think that for me, um, I was just around that cusp. I'm, I'm, I'm a little older than them. <laughs> I was 10, I think, right? I, I totally yeah. just contacted Lisa, uh, what was it, a month ago? Yes, for the I was first like, time. I need to talk to Lisa. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but I was yeah. young. I didn't realize Lisa was so much older than me. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, don't go that far. Not so much. <laughs> well, back then, I was way too young. Way too young. I should have been playing soccer. <laughs> right. Rick, Rick you're the baby we're... of the group, right, Rick? What? You're the baby of the group. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I, I, at least that's the way I acted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, I saw you in the footage of uh, the uh, the King Richard segment. I saw you. Oh. You said a line right before then, and you you typed and said, "Oh my gosh, it's me!" or something. Well, right, I completely <laughs> forgot about that. I think I was subbing for because uh, I I understudied the the director role too, and that was a, oh. that was director uh, uh, John Christopher Jones, and that was oh, that so was her, apparently he wasn't there at at that particular day. Rick, but, you look uh, the exact same. Oh, <laughs> stop it now. <laughs> You do. Oh, that only means that I've always looked this bad. No. <laughs> Where are you guys? Where do you guys all live? Where are you all? I'm in New York still. Lisa is in New York. Rick? Philly. Philly. <laughs> uh, New York adjacent. I'm in uh, Jersey City. Okay. Cool. So I'm. Uh, and Claudia and Mitchell, where are you guys? Claudia, hi. Um, I'm in Mitchell. Dallas, Texas. Ooh, oh. I am still in New York. Whoa, Mitchell. <laughs> and Aaron, hey, are you are you in the are you in the West Coast? I'm on the West Coast. I've totally trans. Uh, you know, yes, I've I've lost my roots. It's bad. She's a Cali girl. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing any of the weather over here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know, I know, but I miss it. I definitely miss it for sure. Of course, well, Mitchell and Claudia. I just wanted to ask really quickly because, like this, this piece is supposed to be well. The whole show is supposed to be taking place in the '90s, anyway. So, was this a little bit more unique to like the other productions where sometimes you know when you're doing another show, it's from a different era. So, was it a little bit more easier to work on for this particular show since it's you know what was going on? I would say it was worse. I hate doing <laughs> modern dress. To to um to quote Larry Gelbart about if Hitler's alive, I hope he's out of town with a musical. I want to <laughs> amend that to say if Hitler's alive, I hope he's out of town with a modern dress musical in Chicago in December. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh Claudia God. can relate to this. We would be, they would, 
they would say we're have, putting in a new number and we would go out shopping. There were no cell phones. We'd come back with 20 shopping bags in, you know, in the wind and the snow. And they'd say the number was cut. Yeah. It was just right. every piece of clothing on Martin Short's back from Chicago had been replaced by the time we got to New York. Wow. wow. Was that was that a creative decision not by you guys or what, what was? It was by committee. You know, the producer's wife has an opinion. Steve Martin came to see the show. He oh. had an opinion. Martin, you know, it's just <laughs> everyone has an opinion when it's modern dress. No one has an opinion when it's the 18th century. You know, it's <laughs> so. I think be, I think because it's modern dress, um, when they get into rehearsals and they start having creative ideas and they want to make changes, then what they do is they they make those changes and then we reshop the clothes and we can return the clothes if they're not worn, the tags are still on them. So it creates an environment in which you're constantly shopping and constantly returning things. And it took a lot of other assistants that helped us to get all that back and forth. And as Mitchell said, in Chicago, in the snow, because there were so many changes to the show in Chicago. Um, I remember particularly the shoes. They were talking about it earlier. The number that had the, they were calling it hip hop though. In these days, we would never call it hip hop. And this but, was before Zappos. Yes, this was before <laughs> Zappos. And we had all the show, shoes already in New York. And when we arrived in Chicago, there was kind of, or maybe it happened in, in New York, there was a um, choreographic nightmare with the shoes, even though they'd been approved by the dance captains. And we had to reshop all the shoes for that number. This one? No, uh, I don't think it was this number, bit. was it, Mitchell? It was the hip hop no. number. Yeah, oh, the, it was the hip hop well, for, uh, for Jump for Joy. Jump oh, Jump for Joy. joy. Well, Jump well, for Joy. It was like cross colors. That's what it reminded me of, the cross colors. Yeah, well, Jump well, for Joy. They were like then. they were like jockeys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Should just going through the program pictures that Mitchell had. So if you guys want right. to comment along with them, because I thought it might be it might be good to have some visuals for some people who have not seen the show. So mm -hmm. there did you guys design the hamburgers and the cake? I well, we we assisted Santo, yes. Wow. Yeah. And I, I remember wonder. there being a big change to those costumes at one point. Yes, and Bernadette. Yes, they talked about it in the first hour. It, they were all kind of, you know, sexy bustiers, and then they right. morphed into <laughs> very realistic, you know, food. French fries. <laughs> yeah. But it was very humorous when the French fries used to bounce around when she would kind of do her little strut. It was, I thought it worked. It's funny. Maybe because I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Here's I love those Richard the Third costumes. Those, so, yeah, these those are were amazing. Yeah. Did did, did you get them from another production, or did you guys make? Them? No, no, they were custom made. They were oh made. my goodness. They are. They are. There you go. <laughs> Suzanne, and he sorry had, about he the had hair. Platform there it is. shoes and that wig and yeah. <laughs> so I was telling Tammy earlier that that. I have very fond memories hey. of the goodbye girl that are not related to the show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you I can, have... can I tell this story? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So my widowed father was getting remarried in 1993. So as a wedding gift, I brought my father and my future stepmother into I New York. Remember. And this was the only mm -hmm. Broadway opening and opening night party they had ever been to in their lives. So wow. for them, it was a very, it was, it was, it was a very oh, special wow. night. And so that made it more special for me than a normal opening night. Sure. And even more pressure in a sense. Did they get any, did they get a picture with Martin and Bernadette? I don't think so. This was before cell phones, you know. Oh, mm -hmm. well, at least there weren't very pictures. <laughs> I think, I think Aaron, you and I have like two pictures in the whole world of, of, of us being in the show. We, you know, we had, uh, there wasn't very much footage. Aaron says she can't hear. Oh, you can't hear? Can you hear me? Here, Aaron, why don't you, if you want to exit and then re-enter, maybe that might help. It sounds like it might be your phone. I'm not sure. 
She can't hear. So yeah. here. Oh, we'll you can't hear. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean. Can I didn't know anything? I'm going to. She just. Rem- I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm going to come, come back on. <laughs> She'll come back. Well, while we're um, while we're while we're waiting oh, for Aaron, okay. <laughs> while we're waiting for her to come back in, I do have a message from Peter Eastman. So let me. Oh, he has a story. Peter. So let me see if I can put that on. And I'll bring Aaron back. Aaron, can you hear us now? Yes, that was so oh, weird. Oh no, it's okay. Okay, <laughs> okay so sorry about that. No, no, you're fine. Here, here's a message from Peter. He's in Germany. Most of my memories of the Goodbye Girl come from the out-of-town tryout in Chicago. Uh, there were a lot of changes made in Chicago. The, the opening number was, the original opening number was cut after the first preview, I, I believe. It might have been performed a few more times, but just in order to give uh, the replacement a, a chance to be rehearsed. It was set, the opening, the first the original opening number was set in uh, like a theme restaurant based on Planet Hollywood, where Lucy and her friends are saying goodbye. Um, the set piece, the main set piece, was this wall which flew in and out behind them, and the wall was covered with with uh, photographs of real celebrities like uh, Brad Pitt and and uh, George Clooney and and people like that. Our general manager needed to get permission from these celebrities to use their images uh, on our set. And they were given like several weeks to try to get written permission to, to use these images. And by the time we got to first preview in Chicago, we still hadn't had permission from several of the people who whose photographs were on our on our set piece. So just before the show on uh, the first preview, uh, we had to cut out pieces of cardboard and tape them in front of photographs of these these celebrities who hadn't yet given us permission to use their images. Lo and behold, the the the, the number was then cut that <laughs> after the first performance, so we no longer needed the the permission of these celebrities. Yes, that's annoying. <laughs> I remember that number. It was we're out of here. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it was, we're out of here. Oh, we're yeah. out of here. That's all I remember. Yes. We're so sad. And it I, was I, sad because I loved singing that song and I thought it was great. I mean, I think it might have just been a little too long, maybe. It was a very long song because it kind of on, goes not, into like this other segment that I feel like probably could have been reduced a little bit. But I think the song overall had a good meaning and it, it brought on why she was kind of like freaking out and I got to go and we were going to miss her. And it kind of set the tone for who we were too. Right, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. Because then we really, I remember being in Chicago, my mom was like, I would have never had us leave our family just being, cause then the, our, our part was like our parts too, were much smaller. Right. Yes. Right. And it's a big commitment as a little kid, you know, to be yes. there. Um, yes. But when I listened back to it, Tammy, you had those little clips. I've totally forgot about that song. I mean, once I heard it, I was like, oh, God, I, you know, PTSD. <laughs> I remembered quick. But um, it, 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 yeah, it was it was fun. I remember having fun doing that. Yeah, I remember there getting all these people coming in and out. Right. They were trying to get into the restaurant. Yeah. Right. They were getting pushed back. And they and, wanted us to leave because we were taking up so much time. Right. It was serendipity, wasn't it? That's what it was. Yes. Like, like the, yes. the like an ice cream shop. shop. But exactly. it was a huge ensemble. It was huge. like yes. the, the entire huge. cast. I just remember you guys giving me um, Birkenstocks and feeling like I was the coolest girl in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Birkenstocks with really cool socks. <laughs> And my mom was like, we can't afford Birkenstocks. So this character got Birkenstocks. And I was like, oh. (laughs) Maybe they were even knockoff Birkenstocks. And the costumes we wore were super, super colorful. And like, you know, we had these like crazy color sweatshirts and sweaters. and Adorable. It was the best. It was right. It was always like these just super colorful clothing. Um, Except for some reason, my shoes were like brown. They weren't Birkenstocks, like these... Doc Martens. That's what I meant, Doc Martens. Oh, see, no, you oh, have Doc the Doc Martens. I Doc had those Martins. like weird. I had those weird like hush puppy brown ones. <laughs> I didn't like them. <laughs> no offense, like, my guys. other outfit was cool. <laughs> I think you I won't, have. You won't give up after thirty years. <laughs> no, I won't give up. Sorry. I did like Mitchell. the pajamas though that we wore with the little like butt flaps. Those were fun. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> 
I think I have footage of Marvin talking about that deleted song because I couldn't make out what he was discussing, but he plays oh, yeah. something. So let, let's see what he says. Let's well, see. Yeah. listen to the critics, and I won't be offended if you say no. You know, <laughs> if a critic doesn't like something here or something there or something there, you, you wonder, okay, maybe I'll look at it, we'll see. Maybe he was right, maybe he's wrong, maybe we didn't have the costumes. Maybe. But when every critic says, gee, I really hate the opening number, <laughs> You do tend that's to listen. Such, you know, that's such a hint. I mean, that's it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty, you know, mm. you kind of go, okay. In the old one, mm. it was a very sweet little waltz. Mm. And it was a really nice song. And it was the whole idea is, we're out of here. Oh. We're out of here. The problem was, Bernadette wasn't in it. We changed that to a song, which is a very... It's a very happy-go-lucky number. And what happens during that, you see the two of them looking forward to California, looking forward to all the stuff, and it almost just dies away. And as it dies away, she sees the letter. So it was that, was that the song? Yes. Totally. Yes. It's, the, it's the I Want song that the leading lady has to have. Yeah. yeah. I still oh, you have it? That's just Lisa. the reprieve. Yeah. Oh. That's just right. I still, I saved everything. I am definitely one that likes memories and to look back on. That's definitely not cheap music, but this is. <laughs> That's oh. crazy. The original stuff. I I saved everything. So. Well, do you have the <laughs> goodbye girl paperweight from opening? Night? I do. I absolutely. Hold do. on. Let me get a zoom in on that. Oh, oh. Yes. that was opening night gift. Yeah, that was wait, legit. Wait, there's more. Oh, oh, yes. oh. And it comes with the Goodbye Girl. Yes. Cup. I have mine's, mine's in storage. I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> I do amazing. have it. <laughs> I had to pull those out. And of course, I got my, my floor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's so awesome. And I, oh, and I have my jacket. Did, do you guys did, have your jacket? Did you guys get posters? Those three-dimensional posters? Oh, nice, Lisa. Yes, Aaron's those like, are amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you, do you still I have, have that, that in storage? Kind of? I think mine's in storage as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean, I have I on my wall is I have the New York Times full page. I should pull it off the wall, but I've got the full page black and white ad of the Goodbye Girl, um, but it still has Gene Sachs as director. Yes, oh, and wow. I have this one with the Gene Sachs. The, the original, this one has Gene Sachs on it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the color that's one, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you have the black and white one you're saying. I, I think so. I have the black and white one that I framed, but I think I'm, I have the color one too somewhere. I'm feeling really no, bad. No, because I, I so I <laughs> so okay. George, Gene Sachs was the funniest man. And he, you know, he was just, he was like the Bernie Sanders of his time. And he would be like, she's singing an 11 o'clock number at 8.15. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have something that you guys don't have here. Uh oh. What, is, oh, what are those, Mitchell? Those are Bernadette's earrings from from the I'm sweet, I'm fat, I'm fries. Oh. Wow. Look at that. I actually have some things of Bernadette no, too. Those are beautiful. so beautiful. We left. Well, I bought extra copy. I bought extra. About extras thinking that the show is going to run, you know, as we do. Shit. <laughs> I actually have her shirts still that she wore. The red one with the. Oh. Uh, the flowers and the black one that you oh. guys probably made. Um, and it says Peter's like, so, you know, stitched inside. I still save those and I have them. Oh. I know I'm weird. I you <laughs> so, have a, cool. a lot of closets. It's my Lisa. shrine. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, that's walking. amazing. <laughs> yeah. I literally well, don't. You don't have anything, Aaron? No, I mean not out here in California. It's all in my mind. All mom's. you need is memories. All yeah, because you're you're close by to me, Aaron. You were telling me you're nearby yes. where I am. So yes. yeah, when you do come out, let me know. I'll come over if you okay. want to sell anything. And rummage through it all. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. I, I do think like my favorite musical part in the show is when the three of you girls, it, it there's only kids in the cast, you guys come out and you do this amazing harmony. There is no footage anywhere. Even the Phantom of the Goodbye Girl didn't have any footage mm -hmm. of you guys performing the song. So mm -hmm. um, I just put this together because I really wanted the audience to hear those tight harmonies. So here we go. I know. <laughs>
Oh. Awesome. I mean, were we so annoying? Because I, you know, I work with young kids. You know, it's like they are so annoying, especially out in LA. Like, notice how silent actors. they are. Yeah, they were like they're radio silent. I mean, young kid no. actors are annoying. No, because your parents were around <laughs> keeping you in line. Yes. You were yeah. not you were not difficult children at all. Thank you, Rick. Yay. Okay. No, That's good. Because I, I have since worked with difficult children and you were not yes. difficult children. Okay. You we're were difficult good. adults now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we think like children. Yes. Like it. And, and, and Lisa was like what were you, Her 11 voice. years old at the time? 14? No, I was like, yeah, 13, 14, just in between. I know, but you were, it was like talking to a 40-year-old whenever she I was. spoke to you. <laughs> totally. I'm surprised you didn't have like a scotch and a cigarette every time. <laughs> yeah, but is, can you it. remember that voice? Didn't you used to be like, whoa, that voice? Sure was, yeah. Her voice is incredible. I remember and, being 10 and being like, that her voice. I actually thought it was vice versa. I thought Lisa was the hang on there every move. I thought you were the lower one, Aaron. So now I know. No, that's <laughs> I'm, the me. I'm the knots landing line. Oh, okay. that sounds I like Barbara Streisand. <laughs> oh God. Well, Rick, so was good. there anything that had to be done differently backstage because there were kids? Because you always hear that everybody, you know, watch your language, everybody be careful. Da, 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 da. Was there you any that Uncle Herman story? <laughs> Actually, we we did get in trouble. We got in trouble for eating too much candy backstage. And I think Erin Aaron and I just recently, since we reconnected, we just discussed how this was uh, a little bit of a problem with us eating too much candy backstage. And uh, I'm not going to rat her out, but I think it was Erin uh, <laughs> was the candy. <laughs> no, the candy I would sneak monster. out. I'd be like, okay, we're on now. And then we have another 20 minutes. So we're going to sneak out. I'm going to yeah. run down to the corner and go to the local, you know, <laughs> the local, yeah, whatever. She was, she was a bad I was 10 girl. And I was like, we're going to, and I'm going to get my candy and then I'm going to run back up the stage. The stage manager and must have been like, whatever, there she goes again. Yeah. But, but they could hear apparently us like chewing or something while we'd be on our scene. So I remember. <laughs> Kind of being, on. yes, you they were like, You can't be eating candy backstage, you have to, you know, do that beforehand. You can't have it. And I remember being cut off, and I actually choked on stage once, nobody heard me, but <laughs> That's I was hilarious. I ate some candy and it went down because I forgot to swallow it. I just went on stage. And I'm like, oh, my God, I still have candy in my mouth. And I have to get rid of this. How do I get rid of this? I'm like, oh, just swallow it. So How do you remember do this? And, yes. I'm and I turned like beet red and I like almost couldn't say my line. And yeah, I survived. But it was a bad idea. And You're that's here to what speak kids of it. do. We make bad choices and learn from them. <laughs> So, so are, you, are you guys saying that more so the adults would get in more trouble probably than you guys because it was just like the one candy incident? <laughs> was um, there a lot of yeah. drama, Rick? Was there a lot of drama? No. No <laughs> drama, but I'm looking at my notes from the first segment. Just a, not there was never drama with the kids. Or the cast. The cast was cool. Was well, there a lot of know, drama? The aforementioned tension in Chicago and I, what? I, I actually remember that when I heard that before, I kind of remember my mom yeah. telling me about all what the was it? stuff. Well, it's it's when, but I remember in New York, there was some sort of a, you know, I here's, here's a story. I remember that Neil was uh, upset with Bernadette because he didn't think, you know, she wasn't doing the scene the way he wanted it done comically. And I do remember, I don't know if I remember if, if I overheard it, but there was shouting coming from, from Bernadette's dressing room. And um, this was before the show. And Bernadette came out and gave a fiery performance. I mean, she was fierce the whole, the whole show. I don't know if you remember this. And it was because she never did it again. It was just a very hot-headed performance. And I really liked it. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know. I, I like that kind of thing. She should have done that every day. <laughs> no, it, was, it would probably would have been exhausting. I want to disagree with what somebody said um, in the first hour. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, let's yeah. Them. They're not on anymore. No, but Grazia <laughs> was offered offered the chance to take over the direction. That's right. Oh, somebody really? said she wasn't, but and she was angry about it. She didn't want it. Why? Oh, she didn't want it. Why? Uh, wow. Well, because. 
I mean, it's interesting because I've worked a couple of times where you have a new director and really it's, if you turn the show around, you're a hero. And if you can't turn the show around, they say, well, you didn't have enough time. It's your but I think she just didn't, I, she didn't, just didn't believe in it enough. But um, I mean, it was a very, it was a very unhappy backstage crew. I mean, the Neil, I think Neil, there was one point where Neil didn't, he was kind of pissed off at David Zippel because David Zippel had taken a line out of his script and used it in a song. And that's good show writing. That's what you're amazing. To do, but, you know, oh. so there was, they, it's like, I'm not saying the designers or the actors, but the people creating the show, there was not yeah, a lot of, there was a lot lost. of tension. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did. We did have a lot of fun, though. But but uh, I do remember oh, yeah. those tense moments there. I do. I do, think I do that remember when that set got stuck in Chicago. <laughs> yes, I remember that. And I think I what happened that. was, you know, because I came from stand up comedy, and and so we couldn't get off stage. Oh my gosh! We couldn't mm -hmm. get off. Uh, you know, uh, we were we because we're sort of we're supposed to go out that way, and and I started ad libbing. I don't know. It was just, it was just like a, a line or two, you know, with something about cheap tickets or whatever. And, 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 um, uh, Marianne Lamb looked at me like, what are you doing? She was <laughs> terrified. <laughs> but I, I was like, oh, well, I'm standing out here. I got to say something. And we, <laughs> I find, you know, since I've, I've learned that you're not really allowed to do that. But I, I, I remember we did find a way off the stage on the other side, but uh, that's just my recollection of it. Never Claudia, right. you were going to say something? Well, I was just going to say that I think that uh, I think the show is terrific in many ways. But I think some of the sense you're feeling in these two hours is that the, cr the creative team, I think, never really got it to gel or maybe it was too many hands in the in the pot, you know, too many cooks mm -hmm. in the stew. And they could never really get it. They just kept changing it. We had a lot of changes in New York during rehearsal. I remember at that time we had a wall with the paper, you know, with the with each scene lined up and we were always mm -hmm. cutting it and rearranging it. And then we got mm -hmm. to Chicago and they were cutting scenes and redoing whole scenes. So it never, I think, got its footing and then it opened, you know, it ran for six months, um, yeah. but- March but to August. Yeah, exactly. But I think um, that there were there were trouble. They the earlier group talked about yelling backstage. There was quite a bit of arguing uh, amongst the leading people in the creative team. I think. And and Mitchell, you you were going to go on about the story about Cheryl Lee Ralph. She was going to take over for Bernadette. If that was that was the plan. They never they never found anyone to take over for Martin. So mm -hmm. I remember that we sat down and yeah. talked to her a bit about what her clothes might be, but uh, it never went any, it was one meeting, it never went any further. Mm -hmm. Oh, bummer. Mm -hmm. Wow. That would have been interesting to see like a, you know, you always, you see the original cast, but then it's really interesting to see the replacements come in and add a different dynamic to the story. So that would have been cool to see. And Rick, we had, I had been messaging you, you said that Martin never was off because you were an understudy for the understudy for his character, right? Right, or Michael McGraw was his standby. And I was the second uh, understudy. And, and you guys so, never went on ever. Never, never. Marty didn't miss one performance the whole time, and uh, he kept kidding Michael about he he might have to be on. And, and he and he did this one thing where he said to to Michael, "Well, I I really you better get you better get here because I'm I'm not going to be able to do the show." And Michael comes in and he's he's never done the show before, and he's you know and he's all panicked and he's getting fit. For the costume, and then Marty comes out. I, I got you. I got you. I'm going <laughs> on. You're not. <laughs> oh my god! Oh so my god. Short. So evil. Him. Yeah, I knew that I probably was never going to go on because you had, you had, um, uh, you know, Marty and and Michael. I mean, and they were two, you know, extremely right. powerful performers. But I do remember that the second cover for Bernadette was Nancy Hess. Do you remember this performance, right. everybody? This yes. was because um, yes. Bernie Standby was, um, oh, her name just went out of my head. Um, she was on all the time. She'd go on for Bernadette all the time. I don't oh, my God. Uh, I know, I don't remember. I'm sorry. sorry, it just went out of my head. But anyway, she was, 
Betsy Jocelyn. Betsy yes. Jocelyn, of course. But yes. me, Betsy. And uh, she was on all the time. Betsy was terrific. But the whole cast was sick. So Bernadette was out. Betsy was on, but she was sick. And by the end of Act One, her voice was like this. Yes. And and the show could only be finished if Nancy went on. Well, Nancy and I had only had a couple of rehearsals. Oh my gosh. You know. And it was the most exciting thing I ever saw because then Nancy <laughs> came out and did Act Two. And the audience, you know, they made the announcement, ladies and gentlemen, um, continuing in the role of Paula will be Nancy Hess. And the theater insiders were just like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. The understudies yeah. going on, you know, like like from the movies. And Nancy came out and was absolutely brilliant. She nailed she it. Amazing. Well, if you were doing the show now during COVID, you would have been on for Bernadette. Yeah. <laughs> I just, we just did, we just, the Met Opera, where I work at the Met Opera, and right. we did a performance <laughs> of the Magic Flute, and we had 19 choristers out. No. Oh. We had oh not gosh. only understudies on, they were flying people in from all over who knew the part. Oh. No. And wow. never canceled a performance, but somebody, everybody went on for something. Oh my Every day God. we had new fittings. Wow, Mitchell. I mean, aren't you exhausted, Mitchell? <laughs> that was that was pretty exhausting to get to get through that. That's the most ins- exhausted man in show business, Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, that just sounds uh, it. It sounds like a nightmare because, like, even if you don't, you know, have a lot of rehearsals, I can only imagine Michael being like, "I really haven't gone on at all." <laughs> it's like you got to run with it, got to go with it, whatever happens. So I've that's seen. The- I mean, in the opera. They don't even get they don't even get on the stage because maybe they can walk walk the stage half hour because of course the minute a performance or a dress rehearsal is over, the set's gone. And mm. another show is another another opera's been set up. Mm-hmm. You know, a Broadway show, at least the set is there, you know. Right. Uh, in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Right. In the morning. But mm-hmm. Well, I have I have a clip of uh, of the dancers. I thought I'd play a little bit of uh, a, a little bit from that documentary. So here we go. Oh, Scott! It's very frightening, I think, for any director, any choreographer, to get into the first day of rehearsal and see all the strawny people looking at you and then. What do we do? So we better do something, <laughs> even if it's the wrong thing to start. You know, those are the most frightening moments. Always at the beginning. <laughs> One, two, three. Whoa. See, I think that she. I think you don't have to move. In the case of Martin, he is what I call a physical actor. I think it would be silly to try to impose my way of movement on such a great actor and comic as he is. So amazing. Yeah. And remember Barry Bernal, he was right. I just saw. Uh huh. Has anyone heard from what's Scott doing? I saw Scott um, you did? Right before lockdown. He, and, he really? and his wife, Liz Parkinson, run the musical theater department at Western Connecticut uh, College. Oh, fantastic. Wow. In, uh, wow. wow, good for him. How wonderful. He was such an amazing guy. He was. I sent him an email, was... but I didn't hear anything back. But I hope he's doing well. <laughs> he's amazing. It's like they have a gra- I've seen shows there. They have a great program. So he, I think they're happy out of the Broadway Broadway thing because I've worked with both of them as dancers and now this this is how they they're transitioning. Yeah. Basically. Good. Lisa awesome. sent me all these great photos. So I thought I'd show you oh her gosh. collection. So let's get oh, started. Right. Aaron's face is like oh. Oh. <laughs> just you gotta 80. send me these. <laughs> I will. I'll send them to you. And, and Lisa, yeah. if you guys want to chime in on where these are, that's fine too. I see. This was uh, cast, the cast party, right? Isn't this yeah. at the, I, the opening I, I, wasn't cast this, party? This looks like a party we had in Chicago. I, I could be wrong. Yes. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Didn't we have a, like a you, Christmas you might Eve party. Remember more than I do. Just, okay. just about stuff thirty years ago. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, uh, there you yeah, go. Mark I have a couple. Yeah. 
The set. So cute, Lisa. You're cute. Your oh outfit is so adorable. So, so, oh my god. Oh, what wait, is this, that? This is from that documentary. There, there's yes. that woman. Yes. Okay. Yes. Pat Collins. Uh, yeah. Pat yes. Collins. <laughs> that woman. Oh, it's David. David Simple. So amazing. Yeah. I guess you guys are signing. You That's guys are signing we, autographs at yeah, the door. We did. That was oh. like preview week. I feel like. Sure. I mean, Denise, my fair, favorite woman ever. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> she used she to do that. So every amazing. Day. What are you doing? I do. You do it okay? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was like her, her line all the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh God. How do you have all these? This is incredible. How do I not have all these? This was like the most incredible time of my life. A mother who took pictures. That's what. <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm actually surprised oh. that I have clear pictures because if my parents took them, it can't be them because they don't take clear <laughs> pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, mom and dad. Oh, <laughs> look at you guys. You guys are so cute. <laughs> Ooh, How fun with, with Marvin Hamlish too? I like love that man. I mean, the biggest memory in my in my life is being at the piano with Marvin Hamlish and him working out yes. those harmonies to who would have thought yes. for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just had us like he would just like yell out, you go high, you go, you know, and yes. we would just and do like, it. And then yep, he decided to oh, okay, play. What, there you, you are, Rick. Just, it's me and Larry and Chris. Larry and, and Linda and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. The marquee. It, doesn't it have a different name now? Is this where Beetlejuice was? I'm trying to remember. No, off the, no. the Marriott marquee, marquee is the Marriott marquee that I know. Oh, of. still. Okay. I, I keep thinking I, that the I marquee. don't know that it's changed yet. I think we were like the second sh or third show ever to play that theater. Yeah, it was like brand new. Yeah, you have yeah to that has to have been taken oh. by my parents because it's blurry. <laughs> well, look at the candy up on the wall. That's guys. my dressing yes, room. Yes, that's all you. That was always your thing. How many pieces of candy? And you'd be so hyper. <laughs> so bad. Played, remember, Aaron, do you remember we used to play jacks and spit the card yep. game? Like, we couldn't wait to get off stage so we could go play card games and things. Yes, was I was like, super competitive. Forget being on stage. Let's just go play. <laughs> you have to send me all of these. This is crazy. I have nothing. Well, 100%. Is that, that I, that's Nancy, his wife, Nancy. right? Yeah. Oh. I yeah. saw Martin driving down Sunset Boulevard the other day, and we stopped at a red light together, and I was like, "Hi, oh. Aaron! You should have told oh, him to join us. <laughs> Call yeah. Tammy." Yeah. yeah. I tried, but as people said no, he was busy. I was like, "Oh, well." <laughs> I just yeah. think it's so cool you got to meet Kurt Russell. Look at that hair, though. <laughs> um, that was a really hard There's, picture to get. They were not exactly excited to take pictures, so Lisa, she wanted to go. She was. That is. Um, Kurt. Oh, that was my friend Jackie Tone. She's like really successful now, and she oh, was in Jackie, Glow. of course, of course, yeah, of course. yeah. Okay. So, and then this is you coming to my house in Pennsylvania. Yes. <laughs> so cool. Thank Roll you. up lighting. Oh, cool. That's my house in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. I brought the city we girl out to the suburbs. Wait, do you remember this snowstorm? Yes. I was wearing plastic bags on my feet. I think in one of these pictures. <laughs> As You'll New see, Yorkers do. Oh, there they are. There they are. Look. <laughs> <laughs> because my feet were so soaked. <laughs> it was so that bad. weather in Chicago was gnarly. That's what I remember. But we showed up for our show. <laughs> my hometown. What's it this? is, Rick? Oh, yeah. Wow. What's this? Is this a Christmas party? No, this was rehearsal. A Sith Pro. I think. What? For oh. the recording of the CD? Well, this was for no, the recording, that's, that's right? The for the rehearsal. Was it? I don't know. You probably remember better than yeah. I do. These are incredible. Is this New, New Year's Eve? Eve? Yeah. Bernadette would have great parties at her house. Remember the parties at her house? This is one. Isn't this the I one just on went her to the roof? One. Oh, Joan yeah. Rivers. Yeah. Of course. Got to be by, by my mom and dad's. Blurry. The Schubert. Uh, Schubert <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Oh, look at Lisa, you, guys. you have to send me these. I <laughs> promise I will. Oh my gosh. I look just like my son yeah. now. <laughs> well, your son, I hope, looks like you because you came yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> 
You guys wow, are so adorable. So you had a tiny dressing room, but you're all you all could fit in there. <laughs> well, we, well, it was just I mean, Lisa and I. Lisa yeah, and I just, just shared a dressing room. Yeah. Well, remember, uh, Jack Hay was supposed to be in our room. Her, but remember, she always went to that other room with her mom. She, she did a lot, a lot of, of homework. studying. She wasn't allowed to yeah. eat candy. Was she yeah. the understudy for you guys at the time before you left, Aaron? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's very cute. Well, we there kind are of the all photos. understudied each other. These are good shots. Yes. Thank you for sending them, mm -hmm. Lisa. I was like, this is my so pleasure. Cool <laughs> my pleasure. I do have a hold on. I do have a shot from uh, Rick. Oh, oh, there yeah. Is. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. With oh, the infamous bathrobe. Who has the I was going to wear my bathroom. robe tonight, but I did. <laughs> There's his bathroom. Too much. <laughs> and, and that uh, it's uh, Sean and Ned. Is that Michael Demby Kane? Was that his name? Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, oh, up in the front. No, in the back behind Larry and me. Oh, in the back. The black guy. Mm. <laughs> uh, Linda says yes. I don't remember. Yeah. They're they're chatting in the private chat, and Denise says yes. Michael yes. Dem Demby Kane is what Michael she's Demby writing. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. Larry Sousa says Carol Woods had her checks made out to her company. Get down with your bad self. <laughs> <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> Carol oh, was Carol. insistent that I would eat her sweet potato pie. She was like, "You're trying the sweet potato pie." I remember, and I'd be like. I don't like sweet potato pie. Like I, as a kid, I was like that. I can't Aww. fathom eating your sweet potato pie. And I, <laughs> I got away with never trying it, but I'm sure now as an adult, I'm like, that pie was the best sweet potato pie I could have ever had in my life. Why didn't I try that? <laughs> Lisa, like, I think you sent this over to me of you and, and you and Tammy. Yes. I went to see her. Um, she had an independent film that was released in 2018 limerence and uh i went to go see it and we actually reconnected i hadn't seen her obviously since the same time i haven't seen you erin so it was really Aww. nice <clears throat> cool. i love the little small reunions and there you are rick with the, with the legend <laughs> Neil rick, did my parents take that picture no my my idiot <laughs> took that picture. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got a perfect one of he came to visit me and I got a perfect one of him and Bernadette perfect picture and then I, it was one of me and Bernadette but there's like from my nose up <laughs> no uh, it's just oh, no. no so I feel and like it, that's like the footage like I was trying to say Aaron when we lost connection with you earlier I was trying to say there's literally like two pictures of us like on earth in the play <laughs> yeah it's crazy. I'm like I swear it was in this show <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. 20 do, you, years ago. do you guys have a memory of uh maybe a stage mishap that might have happened? I know Rick, you just said one where you couldn't get off the side, but girls well, said you the have one any... where Suzanne knocked herself out, and then there's the one Yeah. That's that uh that set got stuck a couple of times. Mm. But uh well that the the uh the the room, the apartment was always rotating. I was kind of surprised because you know oh. It, it seemed like it was probably there's a lot going on with just having it turn around all the time. They, so called, it a, a, they called it a turtle. <laughs> they did. <laughs> was the oh, technical it was thing? Yeah, because it yeah. could it could rotate and then move move around. back and forth and yeah. diagonally and. All right. Do they Maybe. do that still? You, is that still is that how it's done now? No. They had these the terminology. In the yeah. basement no. with cables and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's. I have a question, Erin. Do you remember? Because we're talking about mishaps. Do you recall, or not even Erin? Does everyone recall um, when there was a fly that was like floating around Marty's the stage? head, and it kept during the during the naked scene, and Bernadette had to be serious because she's angry at him and she wants him to get out, and she kept laughing, and we heard over the loudspeaker, and we're like, "Why is she laughing?" Why is she laughing? And we ran downstairs and there was a fly that kept landing on his head and she oh just couldn't, she just couldn't keep it together. So, I mean, th these things happen obviously, yeah. but yeah. she, you know, she pulled it off, but it was just really funny to us. I, don't I guess I was that. the only one paying attention to the fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa, you said it was know. really fun to spend time with Bernadette. Um, like as, as a girl, like girls, we like makeup and hair and everything, but Bernadette has the hair. So yes, <laughs> you said you had and some. In fact, she even, 
She even wore like a couple of little extension pieces that they gave to make her hair even fuller. Not that it's not already full enough. He, she, uh, Claudia, you're agreeing. Yeah, they were. Um, and it the may end, have been covering her um, microphone. Also. Oh, that's could true. be. Could be. We had to but build I them to when, cover them. Yeah. Yeah, they were and, built. And the, the hair pieces were actually built to cover. I don't know if it was the the battery or not. It may have been. I I don't know what yeah, it was covering. Yeah, the battery pack. I think they the ended up they ended up stopping that. But yeah, that yeah. was the that we did was that the for original. a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, I ended up with that hair piece somehow in the end and closing, and but it disintegrated what? over the years. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, are you kidding me? It was no, gonna be worth thousands. It was like of the clip in. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I didn't get it. Like I didn't take it. I just I was I given steal to it. me. I didn't steal no, it. No, I didn't steal it. I was it was given to me. <laughs> but That's it was, you know, I was like, oh, it's Bernadette's hair. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, no, I just oh she had like the most amazing everything, skin, hair. She's just a very pretty and talented woman. I heard that she, uh, that Martin, it would be like his, it would be his goal to make her laugh on stage at a lot of points in the show to kind of throw her off. Is that the case or? Uh, I don't know if it was his goal, but, but, you know, I think once she started giggling, he went in for the kill. <laughs> I feel like Marty's goal to, in life is to make everyone laugh and, you know, mm -hmm. it works. <laughs> And I remember he'd always get on the loudspeaker doing Catherine Hepburn All impersonations. Right. Right. He says, yeah, I'm gonna call, you know, <laughs> doing things like that. <laughs> it was great. Oh, oh, I remember. Here's a do you remember it was our first re rehearsal with Michael Kidd? And everybody was feeling kind of down because it was such a new vibe. And then it was before then either the next rehearsal and he hadn't arrived yet. Uh, but Marty did a parody of Michael Kidd. He put on those big glasses and hiked yes. up his his uh, pants. He, like the Edmund and imitated Lee. Michael Kidd. Oh my gosh! Rehearse putting a, the rehearsal together, and everybody yes. was on the floor laughing. I remember. Does anybody in, in the uh, in the chat remember that? Because that was I remember. I think that. Denise is typing. I see her nodding her head. She says, "I remember." She's like, "I remember." It was so <laughs> cathartic. We all needed that laugh. And she he provided actually that made, for us. Yeah. And Denise actually reminded, Denise. I guess, or, or mentioned about how um, he said, uh, if we fail, it's like not because of me, it's because of you. Or if, no, if we did great, it's because of me. If we failed, it's because of you. Uh, I can yeah. imagine him saying that. But well, I, I remember I, it I myself. Thought he, but <laughs> I thought he meant that as a joke, but it didn't land. I'm sure he did, but I guess joke. it's like it's a sensitive subject since he just got on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might think, have been like too soon. Yeah. <laughs> I think Michael Kidd cleaned the show up a bit, but a lot of stuff that I remember he did was just change it to be different. It didn't get better. It didn't get yeah. worse. Right. Like, I don't know if you remember this on the rooftop, Bernadette had a little black dress and Michael mm -hmm. Kidd came in and he decided he wanted a long white dress. Mm hmm. So that's crazy. Got the dressmaker to make a dress overnight. And because it was, of course, a very different color. We had to have, we had to have a lighting exactly. tech. Mm -hmm. So you're paying everybody to come in in the oh, afternoon no. to do the lighting tech. And Burnett got on stage in the long white dress, and Michael Kidd said, "Oh yeah, the little black dress was better." And that's when Santo exploded. It's just like <laughs> you know. Oh my god! So that's that's right, when you have a new director. You get stuff like that. Hey, remember right, that push cart number? The push cart number. Remember that? Yes, it was. It, he was trying to get it on, and and something was supposed to happen where the the push carts all had to come on at a certain point, and it didn't happen. And kid just kind of like jumped out of his seat. It was at, it was at a tech rehearsal. Did that ever go in? I remember that it was like a park know. seat with the yes, skating. The, Denise Remember? is saying the push cart number. Yuck! I think it did. There's a lot of things that went in and went out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The push cart number. I remember that. Oh my goodness. I'm just surprised that the new song. I guess Denise? it was because it was so late in the game. When did you guys record the album? Because the new song that Marvin replaced at the beginning, uh, as good as it gets, is not even on the album. So, mm -hmm. when did you guys record the album? New York. Right? Early yeah. though. Yeah, like uh, March. 
Yeah, right away when we got to New York, I feel like. I, was it before we opened? Was it that or? early? Yeah. No, it was after we opened. But, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah, but it was I'm just wondering opened. why that song's not even included. And the weird thing is, so the, the footage from the Phantom of the Goodbye Girl has the the, the Richard, King Richard material. And um, from the album, you can tell that there are some lines that are cut in that sequence. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so it sounds like, it, you know, the album isn't exactly what was featured when you guys well, right. went I on. think an album never is, you know, and yeah. it's uh, albums, yeah. albums yeah. often include stuff that isn't in the show and vice versa or things are truncated or, but yeah. Yeah. They because there's, 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 there's a lot of dialogue in that scene that they were mm -hmm. going to put all that dialogue in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. They did the cuts for the, for the album. Claudia, did you have a favorite um, costume piece during the entire show? No, I can't say I have a favorite piece, but I did think that it was a very um, current. The whole thing was very current. You know, it was it uh, all these clothes that we shopped were very popular at the time and we were buying them at very expensive places. And so it had a fun look to it. The modern stuff. Um, I'm not talking about the built stuff, but uh, yeah. So I can't say I had a favorite piece. Um, I mean, it's certainly fun working with Bernadette and Martin, you know, getting them changed and also convincing them to change costumes as we had to go along when the numbers were changing. So yeah. that was a subtle thing that we had to approach very carefully, you know, with a star, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, since since now a lot of people can do the Goodbye Girl because it's a part of MTI, but if there were ever a chance where you'd be able to do the show again, now since it's still placed in 1993, were there, would there definitely be different costume choices you'd make as opposed to what the choices you made back then? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, I think if you were to do the show now, the first question is, would you update it to now? Could you do that script now? And I... And I have to go back to that because I'm a professor. So that's how I think. Could you do mm -hmm. that script now? I see Mitchell saying, no way. Mm -hmm. that, that, it, and it, and it's I set in it. its time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like my life is now just kind of repeating itself. So I just, I just assisted on a, a TV series um, for Apple TV and it was set in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing all these like 1990s things having... You know, I work, in the 1990s, I did it. In 1997, I worked on a Woody Allen movie and we had a nightclub scene. And then in 2021, I'm working on this TV show and there's a nightclub scene and it's set in 1997. So it's just oh very, gosh. it's like, I just wow. want to go back and, you know. Yeah, full yeah. circle, right. But but we remember <laughs> things differently. So it's, yeah. it's you know, you, it, things become iconic after the time period, you know. Mm -hmm. right. It would be right. interesting to see them um, update what what doesn't work well, like the Richard scene. I don't think that that works well at all. And I think that. Oh, God, no. Even at the time, it, <laughs> yeah. it was problematic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. But Neil was for it because it was in his original film script. I feel like if if there if he had given some slack to it being exactly like the film script, because in that documentary it, it shows how it's almost word for word. Now, understandable, great, did well for the movie and everything. But then again, like you're trying to change the medium platform. I wish he would have given the leeway for that because it would have been really interesting to see what you guys what could have come up. Maybe something even funnier, you know, with Martin's expertise in comedy and the rest of you guys, you know, being in the background. That would have been really I mean, the Ann Roth designed the original film and she did she approached it in a very different way. It's like the armor was, you know, cheese graters and colanders and things, you know. But Santo realized he couldn't do that on stage, you know. Yeah. It wouldn't have looked nice <laughs> at all. No, no not the Although same. the movie can pull that off. <laughs> yeah, I just wish they could do something like that. But obviously, you can't even touch something that's on MTI. Like if you have something, you have to do it the way it's written in the script. I wonder if, like, because sometimes they do substitutes. You know, some certain musicals have substitutes of songs. So I wonder if they have a substitute for that song because of how dated it is. Well, I don't know which one they submitted to it because it's got the. Um... London's an entirely different show. Yes. Yeah. So um, the one they have is the Broadway one because I I was I was listening and they actually right. have your original Broadway track as a preview of all the songs from the yeah. from the show. So I was like, oh, interesting. Because I would love to direct it. I you know what I mean. I have right. my 
I have my goodbye girl shirt on tonight wow. and I'm like, ah. I'm ready. I have my That's mask. So cool. <laughs> I think the whole Richard the third thing being like this gay stereotype, which you could do in 1993, not you, you probably and get away with it, but uh, it was, uh, uh, you couldn't do that today. Mm -mm. You couldn't do that. Yeah, it, it really is just kind of a, a, a rather a, an offensive way of doing it. You could do it as a drag queen. If you said Richard III was a drag queen, well, then that would be that would the, work. that would work, right? I, you well, maybe the whole they thing would... in drag. You know, that would work, but then that would, would be satisfying that wouldn't be satisfying a negative stereotype. That would just be. You would just have to have yeah. come up with, get into the mind of, you know, some kind of, you know, Euro trash director. How, yeah. what would be the out, most outrageous way that he would direct it? Right. How would Ivan Van right. Hove do it? You know, just yeah. think yeah. something like that. Or, you could do it completely drunk. He, you know, he was a complete <laughs> alcoholic. And then Richard would say, what, how, you know. I think it would be cool, like early 2000s, make it something so similar to Lady Gaga's style. Like be like, that's the thing the kids are doing. Yeah. Make them all dress up in meat dresses or bubbles or yeah. something like that. Yeah. But maybe, maybe change it a little bit. But it would be interesting to see somebody kind of bring it back because um, I was because I, I was really thinking on it. I was like, well, you really don't have musicals that feature a woman who is technically supposed to be over the age of 35 in your lead role you always have a young ingenue so that would be really interesting and who has a child already you know what i mean mm -hmm. doesn't already have a relationship mm -hmm. and i think that that's so interesting because there's that whole dynamic where martin i don't know aaron and lisa did you guys ever get to play the the daughter role at all uh, lucy no no okay i was gonna say wouldn't that have been cool like you guys get to be on the boat with martin short and he you know says i want to marry your mom but i want to make sure it's okay with you i could be your dad like that's a yeah. special moment yeah. that you really oh, don't for see sure. right he's oh, asking right. to adopt her i love that song right. now that you remember so that. pretty yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think i used to work who understood uh, understudy uh, who understood tammy <laughs> 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 and, and Tammy different is the one who did play different show. Lucy. <laughs> yeah, Lucy. Uh, did, did you both understudy that role? Yeah, basically, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember rehearsing it with with probably one of us uh, for sure. Yes, I remember rehearsing. I remember, you know, um, but I just know that there wasn't. I mean, Tammy was always on. You know, she she always you know brought her a game and you know did what uh -huh. she needed to, even if she was sick, she was going on. I was horrified. I was not ready to go on ever, ever, ever. We hardly <laughs> oh. practiced it. So yeah, I was we like, didn't get a whole lot of rehearsal. No, I did not want to go on as that part <laughs> ever. We could have done it. <laughs> oh, you know, knocked it out of the park. No. Well, let me let me play a little clip of the bows. Unfortunately, I have like there's again there's no footage of Aaron and Lisa uh, doing the the phone number. I wish there was something. If there were, I'll send too. it to you, ladies. But if um, anyone's here, out there. Yeah. <laughs> but here here are the bows. I believe this is from opening night in Chicago. But correct me if I'm wrong. So here, here it go. is. The uh, first of all, the dancers, uh, a terrific troupe. There are twenty of them in this cast. Uh, Colorfully garbed, as you can see, and Colorfully garbed. Uh, two real huge numbers uh, in that show that uh, uh, the bring the house down. And the uh, dancers do indeed deserve. There we the are. Cause. There you are. are oh. Yay. 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 See that adorable <laughs> outfit? <laughs> taking their bow Chris Jones. Soon. Yeah. And right, Chris Jones. in the audience, Lauren Bacall. Carol. Carol taking her bow. She's what a. What a song belter she is. Just absolutely super. <laughs> Tammy. Tammy Minoff, uh, not 13 years old. Martin. I Short. think this is from opening night New York. It's opening night in Broadway because it's Pat Collins. Wow. In front of our cameras. Wow. As you pull out, you are going to this see, I predict, uh, if you had some lights in there, it's New Doc, a standing ovation for Martin Short and his leading lady, Bernadette Peters. I Let's just soak up some of this applause. I think that's got to be the best sound in the world. Applause, applause. Can we take the pit? Martin and Bernadette giving credit where it's due to that orchestra of 25. Now the whole cast gathered on stage. And I don't think this audience is going to let them out of there so fast. This is not just an audience of friends, but
but uh, <laughs> Aww. so fun. Oh, that's so exciting. Fun. Wow, it is. that's crazy. That was Everyone. around this like time, 29 years ago, y'all. It is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> exactly. Wow. It doesn't exactly. seem like it's been that long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, listen, the older... <laughs> It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't. It, you know, to the to the you know to Aaron and and, and Lisa, of course. It does. It, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's three it lifetimes does to me. ago. But for it does me, to you, Aaron. Like, it doesn't to me. Yeah, I I think I was at an age where I blocked a lot of it out. Like I, I remember parts of it, really? but I don't remember all of it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Isn't that right. interesting? I don't know I, why. <laughs> and I. Uh, I don't remember a lot of it either. <laughs> Cheers. Hi. Cheers. Yes. Cheers, everybody. I don't have my wait, I have my mug. I'll pull it out. Oh, Cheers. So I just remember my... one one thing I will say I remember very much so was having to juggle school and oh, yeah. going. That may be why I'm thinking, you know, because Erin, you and I had school. Yeah. And then we would go straight to a show. It was long days for us. Get up, yes. go to, you know, take a train in. We weren't oh. getting home till 1130, 12 o'clock, getting up yeah. again, going to school. It was a lot. But yeah. I mean, still the best of times to me. You know, it, it's odd. You say that I just did. And I'm, I'm Sarah Silverman's new musical called The Bedwetter is uh, I, I and I'm going to be, be in that. And Rick, that's amazing. First, first time oh, I've worked in 20 years. But uh <laughs> It's a cast of all little <laughs> girls about the age you guys were then. Are you serious? Oh no, not all little girls, but I mean, it's like there's 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 three. Wait, I'm sorry, okay. I didn't mean wait for real, but I meant wait. But <laughs> um, uh, I think my friend Donna Vivino. That's right. Yes, and she's in okay. It? So she she played. Um, she played Sarah. the mother in the workshop. What did she play? She played the mother in the workshop. The mother. Right, right, right. I'm sorry. Yes, because right. she just posted something just recently. I'm like, why did I hear about Bedwetter? Okay, continue. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. We were talking about you. We were talking about you <laughs> when we were in rehearsal because you were her, her best friend. Aww, oh, so really? You were her friend. I don't know if she's but, your best yes, friend. Yes, we were in Little Demon together. She thinks you're her best friend. What? Oh, my God. I love Donna. Wait, so, Rick, she when is, is it this... going on Broadway? It, it's not a... It's. Starting off Broadway, whether it moves or not, we don't know. First, uh, first performance is April thirtieth. Wow! And Congratulations. It through the end of June, and we'll see what happens there. But Whoa. it's it's deja vu when you were talking about the tutoring and everything. It reminded me when we were doing this workshop, there was a tutor there every day, and the poor girls had to go from, you know, from yes. the the stage right. to the dressing room with their little spelling books or whatever. Yes. So, Right. And you have to switch gears. It's, it's so much, you know, your brain just has to continue and continuously flip flop and, you know, change the routine. But, you know, when well, you're a kid, you can Rick, do it. We can reunite and but maybe some of us can, uh, some of us are here on the East coast. Maybe we can come yes. see you. That would be so I cool. Want, Please. It's called the wind weather. Atlantic theater. Yes. Atlantic That's theater. Awesome. Awesome. We'll get Aaron to fly in. There. <laughs> Aaron will fly and in. then we'll go Welcome to Lisa's in. house. We'll find the Bernadette hair clip. <laughs> then we'll go to Rick's. <laughs> I have like her a shirt party. too. <laughs> It'll be great. We'll get the bathrobes. Wow. We'll wear them to the show. But I want to go to Mitchell's yes. Met. Met. Can we come to the Met? I want to see what you're doing, Mitchell. The Met. We'll go there. Yeah. When, when when COVID is over, <laughs> we're not. I can't Sorry. do any backstage tours right now. Uh, okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later, and hopefully maybe this time by we're next still... year, the thirtieth anniversary for the yeah. show. You guys can have like a you know a real reunion together. You know, I really appreciate all, yes. appreciate all of you for joining in tonight. This has been so much fun, and oh. I had so many questions, so I was like. Let's just bring you on and ask. So thank um, you guys for for and for sending the pictures in and the video clips. It was great, you know. So, Tammy, thank you so much for having me, and great it was so nice all. to see all of yeah, you. Thank you. What a, what a blast <laughs> from the past! Thank you so I much know, for, right? for doing yeah. this. Amazing. Have yeah. a wonderful week, you guys. It was good to see you, yes. and thanks to all the listeners who've been watching and commenting along. It's been great, and yes. uh, let's. Let's play that and outro hi. music. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Stay Bye, safe, you everyone. Goodbye, kids. Bye, guys. Goodbye. See you later. Bye.